Hi there, it's Laurence Bradford from Learn to Code with Me, and today I'm going to talk more about fonts. Uh, last time I left off going over font size, actually, let me add like that. This was the slide we were at, and I didn't really go that much in depth, I think, with it, and I feel like you know, it, there, there's kind of a lot that goes into fonts, even though it seems really simple. So I was doing more research and figuring out a way to uh, talk to you guys about it. Okay, so the four main ones are pixels, EMs, REMs, and percentages. And uh, as I found out from this article, which is right here, where from 2012, narga.net, uh, there's actually 16 different ones apparently, and some of them are things like uh, centimeters or inches, things that we use for like normal measurement. But the most popular are the uh, the four I mentioned: uh, the the pixels, the EMs, the percentages, and the REMs. Okay, so a pic a pixel is an absolute value or an absolute length, meaning when you you like um define it, it's going to stay that size no matter how big the screen is. And there's a formal definition right there. It says one you know, device pixel of a display is equal to 196 of an inch. Okay, the, the other three that I have mentioned here, uh, EM, percentage, and REM, those are all relative uh, sizings, meaning that they're kind of like they're based off something else. So an EM is based off the font size of the parent element. So a good example would be in a list. So say if there you had a, a list, we talked about these with the UL and the LIs, and then within the list you added another list. The second list that you add would inherit the font um, sizing from the, the upper part of the list. And this ca can cause this effect called compounding which means that so the more and more nesting that you do, the fonts get smaller and smaller, and then maybe you know you wouldn't be able to read some of them. And sometimes maybe you want the font to get smaller with the other list, but other times maybe you don't. So that's one of the problems. Uh, percentages are really similar to uh, EMs. They're, they're relative. They also have this problem of compounding where when you start to nest different elements, the font sizes can get a little funky. And when you, okay, so I didn't talk about the math, but say if, uh, okay, so say if you have your paragraph font set at 12 pixels, okay? And then you set an H1, I apologize, not the um, paragraph, the body, set to 12 pixels, and then you set the H1 to 2 EM. The font size would then become 24 pixels, so it would multiply by 2. And the percentages, I'm not sure, the, I forget the exact math with that, but it's a similar way where if you set the you know, the paragraph or the body font size by 12 pixels, and then you do, you know, the H1 by 200%, the H2 by 175, and the H3 by 150, they're all going to get their like exact values based off the initial um, font size in the body. Okay, so then there are REMs, which are relatively newer, and it's called the font size of the root element. So what makes it different from EM is that it doesn't take its, um, its sizing from the parent element. Instead, it goes to the root. So that would be HTML in this case. So this is actually good because this doesn't create that compounding effect. And it's easy to uh, set this up to make the, to make the, uh, the, the page scale when you make the, the, the page smaller. So for different kinds of devices like tablet and mobile, you have different sizing. Okay, so again, I kind of mentioned some of this here, or I mean on the last slide. I have this link that I want to go to that I found. It's a JFiddle uh, little code thing. 
So you can see, I hope you can see, I don't know if I can uh, make it a little bigger. I'll attach the link in the notes though. So this is really just showing the difference between REMs and EMs. There's some CSS here, right? Okay, paragraph, the font size 12 pixels. I apologize, I should have said paragraph, not body before. Uh, the dot .em class gives it a font size of 0.5 em and the rem 0.05 rem you know em okay great in this example they just kind of show it you know like in like like nesting right and you can see here that how the ems get smaller each time it's getting nested whereas the rem is staying the same so that's kind of the example that uh, I wanted to show you. There's another, let me see if I have it up here. Okay. Uh, this is what I actually did with my site. And right now I'm redoing uh, my mom's site, in fact. Let me go down here. Uh, and I'm using the same method. I, I, I understand it in my head. I don't know if I can explain it that well. But this is from CSS Tricks. I mentioned this, I think, before. It's a really awesome site. And he kind of shares this idea of making the doc, of making like uh, the website scalable. So you can see here, this would be where like, the REMs come to play. He sets these font sizes with the HTML, like the root element. And then he gives these classes like dot header, dot footer, dot sidebar, so that when you resize the, the web page, depending on if you know it's in the footer class or if it's in the sidebar class, it'll resize that way. And then he also gives the what the the some of these uh, heading tags with the different he uses em values there. I'm I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure why honestly. I was like, why does he use rem? I, I wonder if he says it for some reason. He could mention it. Hold on, actually, I'm gonna pause it because I want to find out now. Okay, he actually mentions it right here. He goes, so here's my idea. You still keep pixel size adjustments at the document level so you can make easy, efficient changes, excuse me, size changes. Then each module on the page has a font size set in REM. Okay, that's like with like the sidebar and the header and etc. And then the actual text element, H1, H2, whatever, if you size them at all, are sized in EM. And so then they become relative to the module. And he has this little drawing here. Honestly, fonts, I, I feel like it's for some reason it shouldn't be that complicated, but it is. I guess because this is just this whole, you know, making things scale to the screen size. If everyone was on a computer that was the same size and we all the same, you know, we weren't on our phones or tablets or, you know, had huge monitors or small monitors, it wouldn't matter as much. We could just use pixels, but the sizing is just what comes into play. This is a good picture, though. I like this. Again, I think this is a bit more advanced. I have you here. I can, this is a site I'm actually oops, building for my mom. Here. I'll sh there's nothing really important on it, but let me just kind of show you. All right, let me, uh, I think the, f actually the whole thing. Okay, so I'll make the screen size smaller. This isn't. Okay, it's not done, but see how the, the paragraph text gets smaller in size? That's because I set it up with the with the with with the REM and EMs and the and the modules. And you can definitely see with the footer, right? Like look how big it is there, and then ooh, look how small the footer gets when it's when it's mobile. Anyway, just showing some scaling. Okay, let me see. All right, I'm actually already at about 10 minutes. <laughs> I keep I keep having a, I keep thinking I'm gonna get further than I am, which is kind of scary because I, I keep talking so long about this stuff. But next, I'm going to start talking about some new things like the shorthand way to write CSS and then incorporating the CSS files into your document. This was just a little extra video because I felt like fonts are confusing and I wanted to explain it better. Okay, have a good one and I'll be doing another video hopefully tomorrow. Okay, bye.